All right. So this is going to be a short video just showing some stuff that I've been doing just to fix a problem uh, and so on. The backstory here is basically that Sublime Text is probably the best editor to just get up and go with uh, Odin. Um, and I think it works fine. It's, it's definitely, like I said, it's the best choice you have to just get up and go, right? However, I like Vim. I like Vim key bindings. I, that's the only thing I use for as much as I can, right? And the Sublime Text Vim mode, uh, at least that I use and know of, uh, it sucks, is the short version. <laughs> it just has a ton of odd bugs with just basic Vim functionality. And so it's just annoying to use, right? So um, going back to just NeoVim, uh, was not necessarily a solution uh, in itself because I've talked about this in a previous video. You want solutions that when they break, they become a ba more basic version of what you're using. And uh, escalators being an example. When an escalator breaks, it just becomes stairs, right? So you can still get where you're going. An elevator is when it breaks, you just have to go take the stairs <laughs> instead, right? So. Um, I needed something that basically functioned sort of the same in NeoVim. The reason that Sublime Text actually works when OLS doesn't work, um, if you have a project where OLS doesn't work, is that um, it does actual parsing of Odin code, right? So it's parsing these type definitions and so on. Now, this is not revolutionary technology. Um, you can, in fact, do sort of the same thing um, in any... Or any editor, obviously. Um, and the way that this is commonly done for Vim and NeoVim is uh, tag files, right? So C tags is called. And well, we haven't really had a tag file solution um, in NeoVim. And so I kind of put out some feelers on the Discord server a while ago, and I saw someone mention that uh, a, a user by the name of, uh, I think it's Chengiz or uh, Chengiz, he mentioned that he uses uh, C tags. And so he actually shared with me this, this uh, batch, this uh, bat file that you see on the left side here. And we don't need to go into the specifics of this at all. Uh, the code here is really not important. Um, what we need to understand here is that we are uh, generating tags for core and vendor, right? And so uh, I'm going to measure this command just to get a, you know, a, a time for how long that takes. And this, this takes 3.9-ish uh, seconds. It, it's a little bit long, uh, right? It's not the fastest, right? So... I wanted something that kind of uh, could approach something faster. Uh, it's not as fast as I want it to be, uh, unfortunately. Uh, here we have the build. We're going to use this here. And I'm going to point out here that we are actually generating tags for... Uh, so this is my tags exe binary, right? Um, it's just a program written in Odin that parses uh, Odin files uh, using the Odin parser. And so we're going to output here to the tag uh, tags file. We're going to output renderer, SDF font, dice GUI, and core and vendor, right? And we're going to measure how long that takes. So that took about uh, 0.6 seconds, right? Which is faster. It's not very fast, to be completely honest. Uh, you, can <laughs> you can see there, there's also these funny parsing errors in the vendor code, <laughs> which I don't know. This is actually emitted by the parser itself, which, you know, whatever. I don't know, to be honest, what why that is. Um, the thing that we want here, right? So currently LSP uh, should be enabled. Let's see if it is uh, LSP info. Blah, 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 blah. OLS, right, so OLS is on currently. And if I do LSP stop, yeah. Uh, 
the o OLS actually does uh, some version of kind of giving tokens. Uh, uh, it's more precise with tokens and so on. So when I turned this off, uh, we saw that this no longer works, right? So um, what we actually want, we are now simulating L LSP being broken, right? So OLS being broken rather. And what we actually want now is uh, tag search and so on. So if I say TS, so for tag search normalize, uh, we are now seeing a bunch of choices here, right? So now I could say, for example, oh, it's the Linalge one that I want. I can press two and we go there, right? Uh, this now gives us, gives us symbol search, right? Um, unfortunately, the telescope, so telescope is a way of kind of displaying a bunch of information and letting the users select stuff. Um, and unfortunately, telescopes tags uh, picker and so on does not <laughs> seem to work or rather I cannot make it work. That's, that's what, it, you know, that's the reality of things, right? And by the way, we can also go to definition here um, t and, and just sort of, uh, let's see, we can go to definition on a thing. We don't need to select uh, anything. So for example, if we were to, for example, go to this one, we will go to the only one that actually exists and so on. But anyway, um, I have not been able to make telescope work. So what I've done is I've made a custom picker for this. Um, I'm going to share a bunch of this stuff on my GitHub account and link it in the description, I suppose. Um, you can just sort of copy it over to your stuff. You probably should because I don't think... Uh, we're not going to be packaging any of this stuff up as some kind of Vim plugin or whatever. That's honestly nonsense, right? So what I've made is this picker here. So if we were to want to go to something uh, normalized here, for example, uh, we can see the different versions that exist, right? And we can, we can add Linalge here, for example, to get the Linalge versions, right? And we get a preview, etc. Uh, so this sort of solves my basic use case of I want to search for top level definitions. Uh, importantly, this doesn't search for fields or anything, right? Uh, in my project, and also uh, previously I have not been able to search the Odin standard library, right? So now I can, because now we have this, right? So if if we search for logger data, uh, or just logger data like this, multi logger data file console logger data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, we suddenly can get uh, a lot more from our search, right? Um, and so this solves my problem of searching for top level definitions and, uh, and so on. And that's kind of what I wanted to not announce necessarily, <laughs> but what I want to put this out there that uh, I think we can just sort of have something like this, right? I'm not saying you should all use this thing, but I will just be putting it out there and then people can kind of incorporate that. And we can actually have kind of faster tag generation with some limitations. Um, and we can have this kind of select here that sort of, it builds the stairs, right? That we can rely on when we can't actually, uh, we can't use OLS. I think you should still use OLS, and certainly I do. You saw it was automatically activated in my uh, buffer, right? So I don't see any problem with using OLS, but I think kind of what I'm saying is I have built a set of stairs that we can use alongside the escalator or alongside the elevator rather, right? Uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Um, and yeah. It's nice to be back in NeoVim because I I hate every other editor, I guess. Uh, I probably should just use Vim also. But yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put uh, some repositories or whatever. I guess my config, my NeoVim com config repo, I'm going to put that in the description. You can find this stuff there, like uh, tag picker, it's going to be called. There's a bunch of other stuff in there you can also look at. Um, also, I have written uh, a build system runner 
<laughs> sort of that uh, uh, adds inline text. So for example, if we misspell this here, we don't have OLS running at the moment, right? You can see I'm not getting that warning uh, immediately like this, right? But if we, uh, if we run or we build the X12 here, it will run that command um, in the background. We're going to get the output on the right side here. Um, and, oh, okay. My X marks are not working. King. Oh, hang on. This is not part of that file. Hang on. DX platform. So let's say we misspell fence here. Uh, so let's let's rebuild now. I can run the last build command, and here we can see we get the error on the right side, um, and so we can actually see hey, where is this, right? And then in our buffer here, we get an inline error, virtual text as they call it, uh, that says, hey, here's the problem, right? Which when, you, when OLS stops working, this is something. Again, this is the stairs, right? These are the stairs rather. Um, and so I guess that's worth sharing as well. Um, the only actual prerequisite for this thing is this build commands file here, uh, which is just a basic way of kind of, it's just really saying the same thing as a project file in, in Sublime Text, only the build section. So you have commands that you specify here and uh, you say how to find errors in those. So the error pattern here is that basically. And if we fix this problem here, by the way, we have a quick list here with previews, of course. Um, so this integrates with the quick list in NeoVim. Um, if I were to rebuild now, we would uh, see that this will update. So the virtual text is no more. We get a, a different output window, etc. And I mean, this is very basic. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say like, you probably should have something better than this. But I wanted a set of stairs, so I built a set of stairs that just sort of, it will work more reliably. Has it worked reliably the whole time? No, I, obviously I've had to fix bugs because it, you know, it's code, it has bugs. But at this stage, I think it works uh, well enough where I can actually rely on it. And that's the key, right? Relying on things, because historically we have had problems relying on tools that we use. And so I just wanted to kind of make a video just uh, outlining a couple of tools that I actually built that seem like in the long run, they can be a reliable choice when other things fail. So yeah, that's it. Um, have a nice day and ciao.